It's been so difficult to separate the fact of violence from the way that it's represented. So I think so many South Africans have this impression that, for example, black women are always victimized. They're always suffering in relation to HIV AIDS or black lesbians are always kind of beaten up. So it's a very one-sided image of women. And of course, women, however marginalized they are, are always struggling. They are two sides. So there are ways of capturing violence without playing into this sensationalist imaging all the time. And the donors love it. I'm convinced that you know donors need that image of victimization. Um, Okay, I think, you know, as a journalist, and I actually work in mainstream media, in television and radio, it's, it's a challenge, and um, because for me it's about using, having an insider-outsider approach, using a mainstream avenue to get marginalized voices, um, to get um, issues that will, won't be reported necessarily in newspapers, to get it on. And so every year in South Africa we have 16 days of activism, which has become a month. So this is the big space where all organizations have um, marches, violence against women marches, um, you know, you just have a myriad of activities throughout this month. And so what do organizations do? And I'm also involved in organizations that are um, working with um, women that have been affected by violence against women. So of course this is their moment to raise awareness, to get their story out and to get publicity. And so what do you do? So usually, um, and I help obviously the organizations with strategy, but of course I'm an insider within the media as well. So what we find is, you know, journalists come and I've in the past, I've also done it. You know, it's why you want to do a story. So we want a rape victim or a rape survivor. You know, but we never think of what does that actually mean for a woman who has been violated to retell her story. So on the one hand, you know, that's what the editor wants. You know, it sort of captures the story of the bigger issue. But we never think of what does it actually mean for this woman to retell her story. Um, you know, and so if that if you can't find a case study, then it doesn't make the news, you know, and so you're constantly challenged with it. And so um, in the case of, say, um, Sarki Bartman, which is a women's center in Cape Town, you know, um, and for me, I'm sensitive and aware of it, but I'm also a journalist knowing how do we balance this. So, I, you know, one would want to firstly ensure that the person is comfortable in telling their story and no use forcing, filming it, not showing a face, not, uh, you know, showing fingers or hands, one eye, and also just changing her voice, you know, if that's, you know, and so you, you have to find different ways for me to tell the story because on the one hand, I think we need to raise the issues, but we need to be sensitive in how we tell the stories. And I think in the South African context, as Des pointed out, um, you know, the post-94 um, apartheid dismantling offered South Africa and offered South Africans, black and white men and women, the um, kind of reimagination of a different society. What we now, now find is that different society means that for a lot of us as women, we can't walk at night um, because it's unsafe. Um, and violence against women, most of the cases and research have found that it's perpetuated by a person you know in the house. Uh, and that's the reality of the post-apartheid South Africa, uh, which is sad and as you know, Des pointed out, you know, we then sometimes perpetuate that picture. But what's important to add to that is that women are taking back the streets. They are telling a different story and therefore I see my role as an insider and outsider to make sense of that story in a different way. Just one quick thing, what I found interesting is even in the documentaries, most of the documentaries that deal with marginalized people, black people, um, even the black filmmakers really reinforce this image of, well, we are suffering. And you'll find very few films, documentary films, that deal with the two sides of the stories. The fact that people are not only suffering, but also struggling and living and having fun and doing the kinds of things that human beings do. And it's interesting that those are the documentaries that don't get screened, so worrying. <laughs>